before that and after that for many years would mean the sharp instrument of warfare. That's what Hadid means here. When Allah says, what well, said in that Hadid, the word Anzara does not mean that he brought down iron and steel from the sky. what is sharp to be used in warfare. So our minds can understand this word, because the Quranic words are meant to be inclusive of all developmental stages of humanity. So if our development was that using a sharp object in warfare meant things like swords or uh, whatever other whatever weapons that cut. That's bad. But we have we meaning human knowledge and development and technology have progressed so that what is meant by the word Hadid is no longer iron and steel. What do, you know, in our world, in our time, today, here and now, what is used to cut objects that are difficult to cut and are used in warfare? Does anyone have an idea of, are we still with the iron and steel? Or can we say now that there are certain rays that are used and can be used in warfare? So we have need, even though the understanding of it was that understanding hundreds of years ago, to me, the sharp weapons of steel and iron. Now it's the sharp weapons of certain type of rays. And probably a thousand years from now into the future, we will have Corruption and 
spill bloodshed, that while we praise you, the answer was, Allah responded to them, I know that which you do not know. So the issue of warfare is a constant in history. In our day, in our time right now, or to put it in a count the many wars on planet Earth now, the bloodshed, the battles that are going on now. And can you can you point to a time in history where there was no war, no conflict? <clears throat> can anyone show me a time period in history where that didn't exist? It exists. It's part of the interaction among societies and among peoples. And the establishment of social justice has to go through phases of conflict. Not because we are conflict prone. The obligation of combat duties has been a sum of our science, has been assigned to you, but you are the first to it. We're not sure about that. No one likes to go and, and, and fight and kill and be killed and, and these types of things. But in order to have social justice, we are going to have to prepare for it. And preparing for it doesn't mean that we become irresponsible or we, we dodge our divine duties. No. So that is why you can sense the linkages between developing warfare technology and establishing social justice. And hopefully you get a better understanding if you read this translation. Find out 
people who come there, the Shaykhs, the ulama who are going to be speaking uh, from Bangladesh most of the time. Well, Although I'd like to say that, you know, 
as Muslims, we don't really compartmentalize ourselves to say, well, you know, since we are living in Africa, we should only have scholars from Africa. There may be, you know, a great scholar, let's say, in some country who has deep knowledge. We should benefit from that. Because Islam is universal. It is for all times and all places. But the fundamental point that you are raising is respect to Islam, you know, I'll tell you to ask if any comfort, that they wouldn't even invite us. <laughs> 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 so if you are to invite us, they have unfortunately a slightly sort of different outlook on life. We hope, inshallah, that they will expand in their horizons and they will consider that, you know, there are, alhamdulillah, great scholars here in Africa, and as you mentioned, in Malawi, in Mauritania, in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, I mean, they should be part of this effort. They should be included in this effort in order to, you know, bring about the, the proper uh, transformation uh, of, of society so that we develop a, a good, wholesome society. So, in terms of your criticism of that, I accept it, uh, but with, 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 the, with the sort of caution that we shouldn't sort of you know, say that, okay, we are in Africa, so we shouldn't have anybody coming from outside. <laughs> Otherwise, you would not be here. <laughs> so we have a little bit of a selfish sort of object. No, but see, to be serious, I, mean, I take your point, it's a good point, it's a valid point, and it must be taken into consideration. I think if the brother has seven questions, you better bring them in written form. <laughs> Example, uh, when Imam Ali 
who was the Khalifa of the Muslims, uh, he had a, an issue with the Jewish person in that society. The Jewish person had taken his sheep. You know, he had stolen his sheep, basically. And Imam Ali went to court. He's the Khalifa. He didn't pull out the sword and went to the Jewish guy and said, Give me my sheep or I'm going to chop your head off. What do the Americans say? Oh, they have our oil under their soil. So we have to go and grab it. And if you don't give it to us, you are either with us or against us. You don't abide by what we say, then we'll come and invade you and take over your country. But Imam Ali went to court and the judge asked him, Do you have any proof that this sheep belongs to you? Can you prove it? So he said, No, I'm afraid I cannot prove it. But I'm saying that this is my sheep. So he said, If you can't prove it, then this Jew can keep that sheep. Do you find anything anywhere in the world that this man of justice prevails? He, he came out and of course the Jew was you know, very impressed by the justice that an Islamic society provided where the ruler of the state stands before a judge and the person that he has accused of it as equals. There is no distinction. Do you know of any society in the world where they will, you know, grab the President of the United States and, and, uh, or any other country, the President or Prime Minister, bring him in court and have him. They have, they say, no, they have, you know, diplomatic immunity. Just because he's the President of, of the country, we are able to prosecute him, you know, in, in a court of law. It's only after he leaves this office that we prosecute him. You know, in, in, from 2002 to 2012, the Indian Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, was not the Prime Minister at that time, he was just the Chief Minister. Uh, he was not allowed to enter the United States because he had presided over the massacre of Muslims in Gujarat state in India. In 2014, when he became the President, I mean, sorry, the Prime Minister of India, then all those restrictions were removed. He could come to the US, he was received through a red carpet by the President of the United States, State banquet for him, etc. Did his crimes wash away just because he became the prime minister? This, that's, these are the contradictions that we find in the secular world. That although they talk about these principles, they don't, they don't implement them, unfortunately. And that is where the Islamic state differs from a secular, modern democratic state fundamentally. And that's where I think some, the distinction needs, needs to be uh, made and needs to be understood. So, can you please? Uh, you know, uh, repeat your second question, uh, and then inshallah we'll go into the 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 and the Yes, sorry, just take the mic so that we can get on the topic. Why is it? My second question was about how does the Islamic Quran contribute to the existing tafsir literature? To the existing tafsir literature. Okay. So if you read 
this translation and the tafsir that I have, you will have a better understanding of where other translations and tafsirs are right and where they are not exactly. But it's done with uh, equality 
and it's done with mutual understanding. It's done, not done like some, the, the husband becomes a dictator or becomes a tyrant in the family. No. If we begin, and this is what happens because we live a materialistic life, even though we are Muslims, but the society and the world around us is a materialistic world and society. So that the influence of the outside world seeps into our family life. In an Islamic arrangement of society, that's not the case. So when we say, like there's an ayah in the Quran, Rijal Qawwa Muna Ala Nisan, and you can refer to that translation here in the Ascendant Quran and, and, and compare that translation with the other ones out there that sort of either directly say or strongly imply that men are superior to women. And that's not what the ayah is saying. So these are the opinions that are out there. Uh, not to speak about, um, there's another school of thought in Islam. If I mention it, maybe some people will get uh, a little um, uh, uneasy about it. But it's not the major Sunni or Shia schools of thought. And they say, no, a woman is just like a man, and a man is just like a woman in as far as your question is concerned. Uh, the second question, I mean, the second question is what happens if uh, Thank mm -hmm. you. 
impossible because there are differences between husband and wife. The, these differences are not differences of discrimination. They are uh, differences of complementarity. We complement each other in these differences. We don't distance ourselves because of these differences. So if we can begin to have a healthy understanding of organic culture, then we begin to have a organic society. We begin to have a organic authority. And all of these go together. And the picture, the society that a lot of people yearn to have can only be done with the guidance of Allah and the teachings of His Prophet. And that's not going to happen if we're not thinking.
then society is not strong if their women are not good after. So it is incumbent upon our men or our Islamic teachings to teach people that they do want to set in mind. I was divorced very young in my life at the age of 23. I know from the Indo-Pakistani way of thinking, I could not even look at a newborn child in Kolapana, in Nirvana, because people would say, oh, you give us bad luck. Now, where did that come from? That is because we are coming from an Indo-Pakistan week. My forefathers were Hindus. And in the Hindu culture, you were widow, a widow, your child marriage, widow, you went into a ashram. You were not looked at. So these are the things, my dear, we inherited from our class system comes from Hinduism. And unfortunately, because we, our society is so based on money and egos, but uh, a lot of money comes from other people. That's what my comments are. I'm not here to insult anybody. And I love Sufism because it de-emphasizes the ego. So, my dear, if an African scholar is from Africa, when we have the um, what you mentioned in Joba when you have the Istima, right? When you, there is a black conference, African, black African movement conference that's also held in Joba at the same time. And I would rather be there because they have their women, they have their men, and when sometimes you tell people, no, these are not Kafis. Kafis um, are not non-believers. I don't know where they term came from, but a Quran is just an interpretation that our scholar here today has studied this uh, proper Quran in Arabic. Okay, I'll go less now. So that was just my comment coming from a person that worked at an African historical black university. And these were my observations. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah, thank you for your uh, beautiful comment, uh, I hope on the woman's view of what she sees, and I hope she will improve on that. Well, it's come to the time of the day where we're closing up the program, uh, and it's a token of appreciation and to thank our honorable guest. I'd like to call upon Sister Kamina to come and hand over the gifts. And I understand it's for the wives, because I see you struggling with the questions. <laughs> so these scholars don't have all the answers to our problems. So guys, take note. Alhamdulillah, shukran for your people's time and your effort and your friendly Quran. And Jazakallah for everybody who attended today on behalf of the organizers. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we do appreciate your presence. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just for one note, I forgot, I was reminded, I will be having an uh, emotional wellness seminar in Kuala Pali soon. The time will be announced. It's got to do with anxiety, stresses, uh, uh, illnesses that we are facing. Just an alternative way of looking and looking after yourself and looking at yourself in a different angle and improving yourself, it's all in the growth. Inshallah, we will put out the address soon and inshallah, if you attend, we'll appreciate it.